Today we're going to take our first steps in the photo manipulation unit. We're going to learn how to take a picture and sort of um, separate the foreground and the background. So of course the first thing I need to do is go and find a picture that I'm going to be manipulating. I'm going to go ahead and find a picture of Ed Reed. Now for the project we're doing, uh, athletes are a really good choice, uh, celebrities would be a good choice, maybe someone walking down the red carpet. Uh, but the whole point is that we have a picture of a celebrity or a person that we're going to sort of separate from the background. We're going to change the background and put the celebrity back on the front. So I'm going to go, I've opened Google Chrome, and of course with Google Chrome, I don't actually have to go to Google.com to search. I can just type my search in the address bar. I'm just going to type Ed Reed and press enter. Here we have the results of my web search for Ed Reed. But I'm going to go refine my search and I'm going to click on images because all I'm looking for here are pictures of Ed. So I found a bunch of pictures of Ed Reed like I thought it would. But one thing I need to look out for is a lot of these pictures aren't going to be as large as I need them to be. So I'm going to go to over here to the left and I'm going to click on medium. Um, I want to make sure any picture I get is either uh, large or medium. So I'll click on medium. That's going to refine the search, so only pictures that are medium size will come through. So I'm going to look for a picture that I think might be interesting um, to mess with. And I think this one might be a pretty good one. If I hover my mouse over this one, I find out that it's 500 pixels by 338 pixels. That should be fairly big enough. I'm going to click on that picture. Hopefully it will pop up. Once it does, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to save that image. And I'm going to save it, or you should save it, into your folder in my documents. So if you click on my documents, you should have a folder there where you've done some work. Uh, mine's called Mr. Eames. Okay, this picture is called Ed Reed 6. I can remember that pretty easily, so I'm going to save it. All right, so I've got my picture. I've opened up a program called GIMP, which is what we're going to use when we work with photographs. You'll be able to find GIMP either on the desktop itself, or if not, you can go to the Start menu, go to Programs, and you should find GIMP very easily. Once GIMP opens, there are three windows that you should have. You should have this toolbox, the main editing window, and this layers um, window. If you don't have the layers window, you need to go to this Windows button up top, recently closed docs, and you'll have one for layers. So if I close my layers window, I can go to Windows, recently closed docs, and layers shadows paths. So make sure I have all three of those. I'm going to go ahead and open my picture of Ed, so I'm going to go to File and Open. Okay, I'm going to go to my documents. My folder was called Mr. Eames, and the picture I want is Ed Reed 6, so that's going to open up. Okay, so here's my picture of Ed. Maximize this a little bit. Okay. The very first thing I need to do with this picture before I do anything else is I need to right click on it over here in the layers. And I need to do this thing called Add Alpha Channel. This will be very important um, later on. Then what I'm going to do is I make sure I'm clicked on this layer over here called Background and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to create a second copy of it. So now I have two. And so what I need to do is I need to separate Ed from the background all around him. Now there's the easiest way to do that is to use what's called a quick mask. Quick mask is a neat way of selecting a certain part of the image. If I come down here to this little button in the very far left hand corner, click it, my whole image turns red. And what I can do is take my eraser, when I click on my eraser, I have several options. One of them is scale. I'm going to make the scale bigger, which makes my eraser bigger. And I'm going to erase part of this red 
mask. And when I come back down to the bottom and turn the mask off, you can see that what I've done is I have selected the part of the image that was not red. The part that I erased is now selected. And if I want to, I can very easily delete that part. So if I actually I'm gonna turn that off, if I delete the part that I just selected, everything inside that circle goes away. The dark and light gray checkerboard pattern tells me that there's nothing actually there, that that space is actually empty. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna press Control Z to get back where I was. I'm gonna go to select none because I want nothing selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a quick mask of the whole image and I'm going to erase just the part that has Ed on it. So I'm going to put the quick, quick mask back on and I'm going to press I'm going to hold down shift and press the plus key which will zoom me in really easily. I'm going to turn the scale of this down a bit and I'm going to start with the easy parts of Ed. I'm going to be very careful just to erase parts on his body. For the edges, I'm going to come back in a minute with a little bit of a different brush. It's a little bit easier to use um, to make sure that I don't get anything I don't mean to. Okay, if you do this sloppy, uh, it's going to be very obvious to anyone looking at your, your final piece that you didn't take your time. Um, and you'll obviously lose um, major points for that. All right, so I've got major parts of him picked out. I'm going to lower the, the scale some more so I can get in a little bit closer without worrying about missing him. I'm going to get as close to the edge as, I, as I'm comfortable with right now. I'm still leaving some along the edge of his arm, you can see. And I'll zoom in some more. And I'm just trying to get rid of any of the red that's on his body. Okay, and it's going to take me a while to go through and do all of this. Uh, but I want to show you one or two more things before I, I pause and do that. I'm going to, I press uh, the minus key to zoom back out. When it comes time to do the very edges of Ed, I'm going to go over to the brush. And you're going to see that I have many different brushes that I can choose from. You'll have a little bit, you'll have fewer, but the one that you do have that you need are these ones down here, and they're called fuzzy, because they make it easier to get around the edges without having to worry so much about getting precisely where you want to be, and it's a little bit simpler to get just the parts I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go through and I'm going to erase everything um, except for Ed, or I'm, I'm sorry, just erase Ed all, all around the, the picture and I'll be back in just a minute. So I've gone through and I've erased almost all of um, Ed in here and now I'm going to go back down and click off the quick mask and see what we have. So you can see that because I have these little marching ant guys, I can see exactly what, I've, what I have selected. And I can see right away that there's some areas that I need to touch up a little bit. For example, when I look down here in this area, I must have thought that was part of his jersey, but it's clearly not. That's part of the background. Um, so I need to go back and get rid of some of that. I also noticed that along his arms um, and top of his jersey here, I have not gotten um, all of the all of the arms and all of the jerseys, so I need to go back and fix some of that. Um, and that's pretty easy. All I need to do is turn the quick mask back on, and I can continue to erase more of the, the red so that I can make sure that I get all of his, of his arm um, erased. Down here, where I have erased too much of the red, I can put that back pretty easily. I just switched back over to, the, to this paintbrush, and now I can actually go back to a normal circular brush. I can actually put the red right back on, and that way I can make sure that when I turn the quick mask off, I don't have parts of, of him that aren't actually parts of him, and it'll look really obvious um, later on. So I'm going to pause it again and touch this up just a little bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've gone back through and made some changes. If I turn the quick mask back off, I think you'll see that I've done a lot better with making sure that I have um, Ed selected, but only him. 
Um, so I'm happy with this. I expect that when you do your project, you're really going to take your time. You're really going to be patient because um, that's that is the project. I've rushed a little bit just to get it done for the video, but you really need to go through and make sure that you have this exactly the way it should be. Now, I have Ed selected right now. So if I press the delete key on the keyboard, Ed goes away, which is not really what I want right now. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. What I want is to get rid of everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the Select button, and I'm going to do what's called inverting my selection. So instead of having Ed selected like I do now, I'm going to invert it and I'll have everything else selected. And the way you can tell is not only is, are the ants going around Ed now, but they're also going around the top of the screen. So I actually have everything else in the picture except for him selected now. So when I press delete, what I'm left with is just a picture of him by himself. Now here's the thing. This is why I had two copies of this image. And I turn this other one off. The, the little eye makes things invisible or visible. When I turn that bottom one off, um, all I have is Ed. If I turn it back on, since they're right on top of each other, it goes back to looking the way it was. Okay. But what I can do now is I can take this bottom picture and I can do some things to it. And I'm going to leave Ed here alone. So I'm going to go to Select. I'm going to select none because I don't want anything selected right now. I'm going to click on my bottom layer and I'm going to go to filters. I have several options of, of ones I can do here. I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to go to artistic. And I think for to show you the best, maybe I'll do photocopy maybe. And you're going to see it's going to turn the background into what looks kind of like a photocopy. Now, I can change some settings down here to see how much that happens. Okay, so the lower this one goes, so that the worse it looks. Or I can turn it almost all the way back on. I'll do somewhere in the middle over here. I'm going to press OK. And what's going to happen is my very bottom layer, the background layer, is going to have that done to it. All right, so, that, so it looks like a photocopy. Now what happens is, because I have this image that's just Ed Reed, and that's this layer right here, and that's on top of it. If I turn that layer off, you'll see that I have this bottom copy. The whole thing is photocopied, so it's, it's kind of washed out. If I turn the top copy back on visible, I have that picture of Ed Reed sitting right on top of the bottom one, right on top of where Ed Reed is in this picture. And that way, I've sort of separated out him from the rest of the picture. And so I have a picture now that really does highlight and focus on one single part of the picture, which is, which is Ed. I'm going to press undo here to get things back to the way they were. I'm going to click back on the background. I'm going to go to filters. And I am going to go back to artistic. And there are a few other ones that you might want to play with. Predator can be kind of cool. If you've ever seen the movie, movies about the Predator, um, sort of action horror movies. This uh, makes it look like you're looking through his eyes. So I'm going to press OK. It's going to take a couple of seconds. It's going to do its thing. And okay, what happened here is this glow layer, which is has a lot of these these images, um, is sitting on top of my copy of just Ed Reed. That's a good. Um, that's easy to fix. I can just take this layer, put it in between those two, or maybe it's easier. I'm going to move move the copy of. There, I can just actually press this up button. And now since that is on top, it sits on top of all this other stuff that's going on, and now I have a picture of Ed Reed. Um, Predatorified, or whatever that would be. You can decide how you want to change the image, what you want to have going on in the background. There are some other filters for you to play around with, but find something that you like. 
and make sure that whatever you do, you're emphasizing the figure that you want to emphasize in the picture. And we're going to take this concept and we're going to definitely push it forward a little bit um, later on to do all kinds of neat things um, with different photos. Um, but find one you like and I hope you enjoy. And I almost forgot to tell you the most important part, which is how to save this. Because um, there's something we have to do that makes this a little bit special. You'll notice at the top left-hand corner, I have my file, and it's called edread6.xcf. XCF is a file extension that's just used in GIMP. If I sent you this file to you at your home computer, unless you had GIMP on your computer, you would not be able to open this file because only GIMP knows how to open an XCF file. So when we get a file, we get a file to save it. We need to do a save as. We need to tell it where to go, obviously, but we need to change this XCF to .jpg, which stands for JPEG, which is a very standard picture format that any computer would be able to recognize. And when I go to save, it's going to say it already exists. I'm going to replace it. And I have to press export. And I'm going to press save one more time and that will save it as a JPEG file, make sure that you send me the JPEG file and not an XCF file.